Welcome to Frontier Fundamentals, a Let's Play slash tutorial series about the greatest game ever made. I'll be playing the Amiga version of Frontier here, but the PC version is just as good for our purposes. There are a few other versions like GL Frontier, which is an open GL port, uh, and a few others, but I won't be getting into those here. Anyway, after loading up, you'll see the intro. It's brilliant, so I recommend watching it, but not right now, I'm just going to skip it. And, uh, yeah, we're presented with the uh, startup options, and start in uh, option one, the recommended start position, ROS 154 by clicking there. And we're presented with a view of the planet Merlin, and you can see the gas giant Aster up there, and the habitation domes of the colony ahead. At the bottom here are the controls for your ship. Uh, I'll go over all these controls in time, but for now, uh, we just need to, we're just gonna just do enough to get you flying. So, uh, in order to take off, we need launch clearance. The air traffic control people are totally mental in the 33rd century, and they'll blow you out of the sky if you launch without permission. This is simple enough though. Just go down to this phone icon here, number 4, or, and click it, or, or click F4 on the keyboard to bring up the station services menu. And you see this rather static man staring at you, waiting for you to tell him something. Anyway, as you might have guessed, click launch request, and we're now granted permission to leave. Now we can launch. To do that, you just go down here to the uh, engine button icon thingy, uh, and click that, or press F7 on your keyboard. Now we'll ultimately rise up to about 300 meters and come to a gently descending hover. Don't worry right now about uh, plummeting to the ground in a twisted heap of fiery metal death. Uh, your ship will keep you from falling any faster than about one meter per second, so you've got plenty of time. Anyway, you control the direction of your ship with the mouse. Uh, move your cursor over the view screen and hold in the right mouse button. This uh, puts your ship under direct mouse control. With left, right, up and down. The up and down controls are reversed, uh, as is traditional in a flight sim, but it's much like in a first person shooter, which everyone's surely has played. <laughs> anyway, bear in mind that pressing the left mouse button and the right mouse button will fire your ship's pulse laser, and you really don't want to do that. It pisses off the air traffic control almost as much as launching without permission. Get your ship facing in some direction, not pointed towards the ground, and we're ready to accelerate. Holding the return key for a couple of seconds, and you'll see the oh, yeah, the set uh, set speed icon uh, indicator down here will go up to a few thousand kilometers per hour. Don't go any faster than that. Than that. If it goes too high, you can hold in the right shift key just under the return key, and it will reduce it. So let's go to 2,000 kmh. You might get an irritating sticky keys thing if you're running Windows, which I just got. Anyway. Um, Experiment with turning the ship around, and you'll see this uh, X uh, indicator here, sort of gradually following the plus indicator. Um, now, the X shows the actual direction that your ship is moving. Remember, the physics in this game are Newtonian, so an object stays in motion unless you give it a kick up the arse. So the faster you're going, the harder it will be to change your velocity. Now you might get a warning from uh, air traffic control if you hover around above the uh, above the spaceport without permission for too long. Um, so, and after a few warnings, they might send out uh, the police to escort you back to the ground in small charred pieces. So, uh, let's get out into space. Point your ship up and hold in the return key. Yeah, there's a warning. Like I said, hold in the return key until you get up to about. Uh, let's say 50 kilometers per second. Notice the change in units in the set speed. Click on the first icon here, or press F1, and you're going to a rear view. And you can see Sirocco Station uh, accelerating away from us, or indeed us accelerating away from it. It's all relative. Anyway, and a bit of the rear of the ship with this nice little scanner debris going. Anyway, uh, click it again, and you're going to an external view. And you can rotate around this by using the arrow keys and zoom in and out using the plus and minus keys. Anyway, as you'll probably notice, the undercarriage is down, uh, and we'll want to put that away. To do that, go down here and uh, see, undercarriage down, it may be damaged. Yeah, so click the 9 icon here, or press F9 to retract the undercarriage. Cool. 
Anyway, this is an Eagle Long Range Fighter. Uh, a very s small but maneuverable ship. Small enough to even see your own uh, pilot in the cockpit there. Uh, but it's pretty stylish, I think. Uh, not much for trading because it can't fit much in its, in its hold. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's, uh, we can see the edge of the atmosphere here as we're accelerating fast outside of uh, Merlin's atmosphere. Although you can tell we're still in the upper atmosphere because you can hear the wind howling. Although it doesn't have any real effect. Uh, without the atmospheric shielding on this ship, we'd be toast. But fortunately that comes as standard in the, uh, in the Ross 154 setup. Anyway, now that we're pretty high up, let's turn off the engines. You do that by clicking here the 7 icon and you can see the indicator here has gone from manual control to engines off, engines off. I actually find these uh, names a bit misleading because although it was called manual control there's a fair amount of automation uh, with the ship's thrusters automatically adjusting to try to match the speed and direction you set. Um, engines off mode gives you more precise control of the ship's thrusters. In this mode if you hold return as I'll show you here the uh, forward thrusters will fire, or the rear thrusters, uh, if you if you like, however you... The thrusters that make you go forward. And you can see the actual speed increasing here when I hold that in. And if you hold in... Oh, a bit of glitching there. Just rotate the view and it works fine. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, if you hold in shift, uh, your, rear th your reverse thrusters fire. And you can see the actual speed decreasing there. You'll also probably notice that the set speed indicator is gone since uh, we're not setting the speed outside of the manual control mode. The engine off mode might seem fairly useless, um, but it does have its uses, uh, particularly in uh, combat, but that's for another episode. Now you can see we're in space, and that's indi you can tell that because of the space dust and particles, which basically are another way of showing the um, motion of your ship. I like to turn them off in the graphics setting because I think they just, they're a bit excessive, but that's a personal choice. So, to recap, engine off mode, total manual control. You hold in return to, fire, to forward thrust and shift to reverse thrust. And in manual control mode, which I'll switch back to, uh, basically, let's go back into forward mode. Now, as you can see, the X is a lot slower to follow the plus icon because we're going so much faster, at around 28 uh, kilometers per second. Um, so in manual control mode the ship will uh, automatically adjust its, uh, its thrusters to try to get you facing, uh, try to get you moving in the direction and speed that you set both with the set indicator here and the direction set with the mouse. Um, and it obviously won't respond immediately because it's got to obey physics first and your uh, uh, control second. Now, the, th the third and final engine mode is autopilot, and this one is perhaps the simplest. First you need to select a target to fly towards. Um, click the annotation button down here, the 10 icon, or press F10, and uh, if we go into rear view, you can see some uh, labels have appeared over uh, some objects here, like Merlin and Sirocco Station. Merlin the planet, Sirocco Station the spaceport. So, click uh, slightly to the left of Sirocco Station, and we'll lock on. You can even see the targeting tunnels showing, like, the, yeah, the targeting tunneling debris, whatever you, uh, yeah, it's funky. Now I'll switch the engines off again, and you can see the uh, s distance from Sirocco Station is still increasing, because in a Newtonian universe, an object in motion stays in motion. Now, if we click the engine icon again, we'll switch to autopilot mode. And I'll click back on button 1 to go into front view a couple of times to go into front view and you can see we're starting to uh, the control has been taken away from us and the ship turned itself, I wasn't doing that uh, towards Sirocco station and the, uh, the rear thrusters are firing and decreasing our velocity away from the planet. But it'll take a while to reverse our momentum and then travel back um, so there's a way to get over the, uh, 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 there's a way to deal with the vast times required to travel between the planets. This is where the Star Dreamer controls come in handy, which are indicated here, with the play fast forward icons. 
what these do is alter the perception of time of the uh, of the pilot, um, so that uh, so that things appear to happen instantaneously or very fast uh, when they're really taking hours or even days. And each of these uh, the single triangle icon uh, means normal speed. The two, the second one is ten times. The third is a hundred. Then a thousand and ten thousand. So powers of ten. Now a word of warning about the autopilot, or several words of warning in fact, it's not perfect, it's a bit buggy. If you set the speed to level 3 right now, uh, or 100 times normal speed, you'll probably crash. Um, but it works fine at level 5 for maximum time acceleration, it sort of instantly gets you there with no time to sort of miscalculate the velocities or whatever. Uh, and it will work most of the time at level 4, but if you want to be safe, do level 5. This only works, by the way, when you have targeted a spaceport or a or a um, or a space station. Uh, using the autopilot to travel to uh, other destinations like planets uh, or the stars uh, is a little more tricky, and I'll get to that in another episode. So, if we click on maximum time acceleration, it will get us there in no time at all, or so it seems. And the Star Dreamer will have us come out of uh, accelerated mode a few thousand meters above Sirocco Station. And there we are. You might want to switch to the external mode to get a scenic view of the landing sequence. Or just click maximum time acceleration again to appear instantly on the landing pad. I usually do the latter, but this time let's let it let's let it land us and listen to the blue Danube, also featured in the original Elite. Anyway, upon landing you'll be taken to the communication screen for the spaceport and charged a one credit berthing fee. The, credit, the berthing fees vary between the space stations and spaceports depending on how prestigious they are. And we're right back where we started. But now you can fly. That'll be 99 credits please. Anyway, in the next episode we'll do a bit of trading to make some much needed cash and go through hyperspace to the Barnard star system. But don't worry, there won't be any Vogon constructor fleets there. This was Frontier Fundamentals. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you out there.